Hi, my name is Shay Leonia and welcome to Create TV. My name is Shay Leonia and I'm a singer-songwriter from Anglewood, New Jersey. And I specialize in R&B music um, and do have a twist of hip hop in there and funk and whatever else I can get influenced by. Well, basically I, I grew up in a family of jazz musicians, so that was the, the foundation for my music stylings when I was very, very young. And then everything kind of seeped its way in there with, you know, my sister used to listen to Wham and George Michael and, um, and Madonna. And then my mom was big on oldies and, and Broadway show tunes and all that kind of stuff. So like I got a little bit of everything growing up. So that kind of enhanced the sound. So that definitely gave me the, the foundation. For me, it, it was what drew me was in was actually I was trying to find my own lane within my family. So my family is like we had this reputation that when one of my brother or sister's teachers would see me in class, they would be like, oh, you're going to be a trumpet player, you know, and I did play trumpet for many years and I was great at it, but it wasn't me. So my mom actually got me started in dance class, which is where I found my passion. And through dance, I just ended up finding out that that was what really was what my calling was, but then when I ended up going to school for a dance, I ended up finding out that I had to start singing on the subway. And when I would sing on the subway, I would sing my favorite songs from the 90s, mostly R&B songs, and that's how I ended up where I am today. So I had basically started writing poetry when I was around like 11 years old. I was going to like different places where I could read my poetry. and. And I got a lot of great feedback, but then when I started singing on the subway, I ran into my friend Sky. He, he was just this random stranger that walked up to me while I was singing an SWV song, and he passed me a flyer and kept it moving. So then when I followed up with him, he was like, hey, have you ever written before? And I said, well, I used to write poetry. I, I could try to write to some, you know, some actual beats, and he sent me some tracks to write to. So that's when I tried writing to it, and discovered that I could actually do this and when I found out that I could match like I could fuse together my writing with music like the two of the things that I, I love dearly then it was kind of like a no-brainer and then I, I found myself thinking about it last thing when I went to sleep first thing when I woke up that's pretty much like that's how you know with anything in life you know for I know for a lot of people they end up in a situation where they get into something in, in the arts you know, period, where there's a lot of skepticism surrounding them and a lot of people saying, ah, uh, you might want to do something more stable. And um, so a lot of those people, I guess they, they, you know, it's easy for them to fall into doubt and situations like that. And um, for me, fortunately, like, thank God, I grew up in a family that did pursue music and showed me that it is possible to do what I want to do. So the giving up factor is definitely there's definitely like an era of like, oh my God, is it going to really work? You know, but as far as giving up, I, I've never encountered it. I would, I, I don't really have one that chronicles my life, but I would definitely say that I relate the most to the first Rocky. Um, I, it, not even, not even feeling like a, you know, like a failure, like my life is going nowhere. You know, I never felt like that, but I definitely, definitely relate to the, I just want to go the distance mentality. Like he's lying there in bed with Adrian and he's just like, I just want to go the distance. I don't care if I win or if I lose. I just want to know that I stood toe to toe with the best there, there was in the world. And that's why I won't give up. Because to me, it's not about giving, giving up. It's about really seeing how far can I go? Like how much can I push myself? And really my only competition is myself, you know? so. I, I just want to see how far I can take it, you know, and, and how much can I do of what I love doing already. It's actually two that are in conjunction with, with each other. The first one is one that actually my mentor Steph told me that only recently synced in where it's do what you can with what you have because I, for the longest, was putting off things that I wanted to do because I was like, oh, I don't have the money for that, or I, you know, I don't know the right people for this. And it's really like something that you can quickly use as an excuse to prolong your development if you let it. 
and it'll stifle you. And then the other thing that worked in conjunction with that is nobody cares, work harder. <laughs> because um, those excuses, you can't send out a newsletter to, to your fans and say, hey everybody, this month um, I decided not to do this, that, and the third because I don't have the resources or, you know, blah, blah, blah. And, and you know, what do you expect them to, to think? It's, it's just, you, you really just have to just keep on trucking and if you feel like you're, you're short on resources, you just have to make it work because nobody is going to care in the end except for you. People like me, um, well, if I were to, were to address being white, um, I would say that the, the biggest misconception about being white is that we can't relate to um, urban music because there are artists out there that, that do disrespect the genre and the roots of the genre, no names mentioned. <laughs> and then, um, but that's not the case with everyone. You have to give, you have to give people of all culture, cultures a chance to, to show you that yes, they do respect and have an, a huge deep appreciation for, for the genres and, and what, you know, how they came about. Um, the other misconception about is uh, definitely about being a woman. Um, dude, it really is a testament to um, how often you hear a, a successful woman being referred to as a bitch because we have to um, be so assertive in order to not be taken advantage of that it's it just gets misconstrued so often. And really it's just, hey listen, we just want to get the job done the same way that a guy wants to get the job done. Just don't give us a hard time about it and call us sweetie and <laughs> do all that kind of stuff. So those are the, the biggest two that I run into a lot. They literally come from the weirdest places and times and inspirations. I would say the easiest ones are after a huge fight with somebody. That's like when I'm just like, oh yeah, <laughs> you know, like, and I just want to find a beat immediately and just, just the verses just come pouring out. Um, other times it's difficult, especially, I would say the most difficult time for my creative process is when I want to say something um, inspiring because a lot of times it can come off as being preachy and I think that's difficult for any songwriter to, to you know, try to encourage people without trying to tell them what to do in their life or, or act like you're holier than thou. Um, but I did succeed with uh, this one song that I had called Keep Your Head is a song that I wrote after reuniting with a friend of mine after 10 years and discovering he had become an alcoholic. And he told me that he wanted to stop and he wanted to get better and seek help. And I told him I would be there for him, but then at the end of the day, it ended up being a situation where I wanted it more for him than he wanted it for himself. So that was a situation I was able to write, you know, very easily to, but it really varies. Like the other day I was washing dishes and all of a sudden I had to like stop because just words just started seeping in. I don't know if you've ever seen like there are interviews with Michael Jackson where he's like, I don't know, just the words just started coming down and, and the beat and the beatboxing that he starts doing is, is really, that does happen. <laughs> I would say that, you know, unknown as of now. Uh, Maya Astusena is somebody that is like a huge inspiration for me. Um, she's, she's such an inspiration to me because of how success, successful and how steady her climb has been since I've you know known her. And I didn't always know her personally. I was watching her like from the background being all creepy. But, um, but yeah, I was just like watching her climb and she's doing exactly what I wanna do you know, with my career. She's traveling the world. She's getting to meet the people whose lives her music is affecting. Um, you know, she's getting to just really create her art and perfect her, her artistry. So she's a huge inspiration for me. Um, as far as, you know, other, other more commonly known artists, I would, I just, I'm a huge Janet Jackson, like, <laughs> fan. I just, yep, mm -hmm. I just, I look up to her, her work ethic so much and hers and Barbara Streisand's, like the two of them, they just, they get the job done and they get it the way, done the way that they want it done. And it's just big ups to them. When I was growing up in, in school, I was in a predominantly Irish-Italian neighborhood. So we were the only Jewish family on the block and in the town besides the one other Jewish family next door to us. <laughs> it was just the two families. Yes. Yeah, so, <laughs> so basically, um, my brother is much older than me. So when he was going to school, like 
kids were twacking him on his ears and calling him derogatory names, you know, like Jewish derogatory terms, and um, and beating him up after school and all this kind of stuff. So then, you know, fast forward 16 years later when I came around and it was my turn to go to school, uh, my mom did something really, really unique. She decided, okay, I'm going to start immersing the rest of her class in her culture. So what she would do is she would, for Hanukkah, she would make potato latkes. We would go to the, the candy store and get blue cellophane paper and get blue and white jelly beans and pack them up for everybody in the class. And we would bring menorahs into the classroom and she would bring, you know, Hanukkah Herschel and, and the goblins and all that kind of stuff and like books to read. And she would basically, she would teach the whole class about my faith and about my culture and all that kind of stuff. So it slowly but surely all the the making fun of my brother that type of behavior i didn't have to go through that because my classmates were more sympathetic and they understood and instead of making fun of what they didn't understand they asked me questions so i wouldn't say necessarily that my judaism has affected my music as much as much as the the demonstrating how to inform people about what makes you different and to change their minds around. So that's what my mom taught me from the experience. So as opposed to, you know, just brushing people off, invite them in and ask them, hey, is there something that you want to ask me without me judging you? Or, you know, how can I help you to better understand who I am? So that's helped me with my music. Artistic freedom is getting to like, just uninhibitedly make what your soul is telling you to make as far as art is concerned. It doesn't really matter at the end of the day if you ask 10 people, hey, is this good? If you know in your heart that you put everything that you had into it, because if it's good to you, it's art, it's subjective. Like not everybody's gonna love it, but if you feel like you accomplished what you set out to do, then hey, you, you succeeded, you know? So artistic freedom is getting to be able to do that with anybody, without letting anybody tell you that it's bad or that it's not good enough or that it's to this or to that and doubting yourself and letting that seep into your head and then throwing away what might be a masterpiece later on, you know? Not everything takes, takes form right off bat. I hate to sound like, a, like an old person saying this, but I feel like there's a lot of soul missing from the industry. I feel like if you, if you look at um, you know, the biopics and, and watch documentaries and read, read biographies about certain artists from you know, a few decades ago, um, you were finding that a lot of people were making the kind of art that really, really touched somebody deeply. And today, I hate to say that it just feels like everything is so, hey, we're gonna have this session tonight and we're gonna write 10 songs and they're gonna all be hits and you know they're gonna all get placed and hey, let's ship them off to this A&R and then the A&R picks them all up and next thing you know, you have 10 songs that sound exactly the same that, you know, all, it's just, it's like this vicious cycle. I really um, appreciated back in the day when there were writing teams for one artist that were consistent. Um, I hate to continuously go back to Janet, but again, with the Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis team, you know, them working hand in hand with Janet. And I actually got to, to find out from somebody that knows them personally that their process really is, okay, we have this idea, let's get you in the booth, we're gonna play the beginnings of this idea, and let's hear where you go with it. And so that's how a lot of Janet songs were birthed. Like, it, it's just something that I feel is lacking in today's music and I so I wish we could go back to having you know specific teams for artists um, for independent artists I would say I, I would love to see more just more business education on a lot of the independent artists end because uh, while it's amazing that we have this artistic freedom and we get to brand ourselves the way we want I feel like too many independent artists are sold this lie where they think that learning the business end is selling out and making their music into a product and treating it as such is selling out. That's not the case, it's not true at all. Because if you don't wanna make money off of your music, you don't have to, but then call it what it is, it's a hobby. 
But if you want to survive off of your music and you want that opportunity to do what Maya is doing, which is being a full-time musician, traveling the world, getting to meet the people whose, whose lives were completely changed or who got through a difficult domestic violence situation with their spouse just by listening to a song of Maya's, you know, those are the kinds of people that said, you know what, I'm not selling myself short by turning this into a business and people need to hear this. So. I, while I do feel like there are a ton of independent artists out there that are amazing, we're not hearing them because they're being like, oh, no, 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 I don't, I don't want to sell out. Come on, get over that. Just start start learning the business end. Start protecting yourself. Start doing the copyright. Start registering your music and, and learn how to, how to market yourself and brand. I will create timeless music. Uh, I just don't find myself getting caught up into um, into what's trendy usually and uh, a lot of people get frustrated because they'll be like oh did you hear that latest song and I'm like no I didn't and then they go well why you're a songwriter you need to be up on what's current and while I do agree to an extent I find myself listening to what my soul and spirit is telling me to listen to at that very moment I don't know if you've ever experienced you must have as a music fan that time where you could listen to the same song at two different times in your life. And one time it's just like, all right, this is cool. And then another time you'll play it and you'll just be on the bus or something and you'll be like. And it's just, it's just speaking to you at that very moment. And for me, that's not necessarily always going to be what's current. So I just wanna make that kind of music. I wanna make the kind of music that, you know, 50, 100 years from now, people are still going back to that classic that Shay Leonia made because it's what's relevant to them at that very moment, and if they don't get to hear it, then they're gonna drive themselves nuts. <laughs>